All right, guys, welcome back to today's video for Farmer Scoops. I'm well wrapped up today. Phone is a small bit of a wobble, but we'll just get on with it anyway. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And if you have a quick chance, you can throw me a quick comment. Today's video, we are out. We're all uh, wet geared up. We had a phone call from a neighbor of ours this morning about our sheep, and that's when I'm all wet geared up because I actually have to go and gather them up. Um, Zach is looking to go 12 rounds with the neighbor's ram. He hasn't gone in, they haven't broken in, but um, the neighbor was just a tad bit worried because Zach is a small bit on the feisty side and we don't really want him to go 12 rounds with him. So, uh, excuse me now as well, I'm a bit out of breath. I'm a tad bit under the weather today. I've woken up this morning with a flu, runny nose, and I think I have a bit of a temperature. But as a man says, you have to plow on and keep going. Oh, it's just miserable here today. Now we've had some amount of rain again last night. Roger and Smokey there is waiting to get out, but they won't be out when I'm uh, working with the sheep. Because Roger, I'm not sure if Roger has seen sheep before, so I don't want to go introducing them on a day that I don't want to be running around after sheep. And we're going to head over to the field and see, hopefully, fingers crossed, if we can manage to get this done. I have to grab a bit of rope as well, because I need to make up a bit of a halter when I get Zach into the trailer. Zach is actually quite easy to handle once he gets his head in the bucket. Once he has his head in the bucket, you can grab him and then pull him around the place. So this happened very quickly. When I came into the field, I took a hop off the quad bike and I had my bucket of nuts. It started rattling it and it came like a sow. So he did. So as soon as I'm out of breath now, as soon as I got him to the trailer, I grabbed him. I got him in the small back door and I put a halter on him, a temporary halter, which I thought I'd have long enough to be able to stick on to the field, which now will work. I'm going to have to find a small bit of rope now and just tie him. I'm going to tie him to the front grip here. And we're going to go down to that gate that's down there. I don't know if you can see it on camera now. The wind might be blowing this as well. But we're going to go down to that gate. And once I have him tied here at the front and I know he can't get out, I'll let down the loading door and try and just wrangle the sheep in with the bucket of meal and hopefully they might just hop in the trailer behind him. And there you have it, folks. All loaded up. I forgot to switch on the GoPro. My God above. And I wouldn't mind. It was the simplest job ever. I got the ram into the front of the trailer. I got him tied on. I threw in the bucket of meal, kept him quiet. Let down the loading door. Went out around a couple of sheep. And they all ran up into the trailer. I got off the quad bike and so just forgot to put on the bloody GoPro. The Wainlands will be wondering what's going on and they'll be up here now in a minute trying to get out into this place. But we are done here now for this year. We are done here all together. This is, we're finished with this now after this year. So guys, we're not gonna waste any more time. We're gonna crack on before the rain comes. Stay now. I'm just gonna just wipe this right now, guys. That's even made it worse. I'd have to get something a bit drier. Much better. This is where he'll wait now because he's no longer required. And I suppose at this time of the year, there's no buying for them. So he's as well off now to be here now. 
munching away in a bit of grass. He's not happy now, anyway, but he'll get over it. So, oh, I just stepped into it. I am going to get this turned around. I'm absolutely soaked through. I'm going to get this turned around and get back down to the house. Let's get this gate closed up. I'm just trying to keep a look out here to see. He's gone down the wrong side of the drain. It makes no difference whatsoever to me if he wants to go 12 rounds with Billy or Sutty. At least I know they're my own anyway and they can have a fish fight too if they want all day long. All right guys, so a few days has passed now and we have the sheep back here at the house. I'm just gonna turn the camera around and give you a quick look at the condition the ground is in. As you can see, the six yos are up here and Roger's gone in for a look around there. He'll be back out in a minute, but as you can see, I drove in here the last day with the quad bike. <whistles> Roger, come on. And as you can see, we left a few tracks here. I actually drove over. I went across the hill and went down there. Now that wasn't me, but it was me, but it wasn't when I was bringing the sheep and that was a different day. And it has gone considerably wet. I, had to, I got stuck there with the quad bike and the trailer and I had to let the sheep off here. And I drove over the hill then when the trailer was light. But I wasn't expecting it to be as wet as it was. But as you can see, all the mules up there are all extremely heavy. They're all, I would say, wet and lamb. They're going to have both runs that have this field here and the field at the further out, the further out along the edge of the road. We're going to leave them here until such time as we can see what's actually happening with them. Uh, Roger is happy out there. Hunting away. He's never been in a field with sheep, I don't think. So I don't know if he's actually even seen them yet. Or seen the sheep. I know he's getting used to the cows now around the yard. Which is good. And the calves. But he's just a happy-go-lucky pup. Man for playing. I had Dad out there a while ago and... Um, he was saying about there was two ash trees. In the yard. I'm actually going to give you a look at them and see what you think. These were the two ash trees in question. Now these are planted for as long as I can remember. Now there is a bit of stuff still hanging on them. We call them the little helicopters. Well I suppose as children you call them little helicopters because if you were to grab one of them and flick it up into the sky it twirls around like a helicopter down to the ground. But as, the, as you can see there's still a lot of them on that one. But he said to me today, he said he thinks that these two ash trees have that ash dieback. I don't know if anyone has experience with that. You can throw it in the comment section below. Now I am looking up here on this one. Up here. That appears to be new growth. The branches up there appears to be new branches that's grown. So whether or not that is right or not, I don't know. But some of the ones that's coming out from the trunk look extremely dried out and brittle. And if you grab a couple of the smaller ones that's down low, they do snap off. So I don't know. Compared to the ash trees that's up the road, they are definitely different, but I'm not 100% certain. And if it's a thing that they do have that ash die back, they're going to be cut here and gotten rid of because we don't want we don't want them falling on anything because there's a power wire running behind them. You can actually see the power wire there. That power wire is our main power wire and runs our um, security cameras in the air. So we wouldn't want the trees falling down on top of that. So we get them cut down if it's a thing that they do have that ash die back. Um, if anyone has any um, information on that, you can throw it in the comment section here and just give me a, an idea what I'm supposed to be looking for um, or what we can be looking into to figure out what's what with that. Let that and just see if anyone comes back with any information would be greatly appreciated. Actually, that looks a bit better when you look at it like that. They do, they are looking fairly withered and not in great, great condition. But anyways guys, we're going to leave it at that for today's video. Um, like I said, if anyone has any comments on that Ash dieback topic, you can throw a few comments below and we get a bit of a discussion going on it because I'd like to find out um, if it's a thing that, what do you actually look for? Uh, is it possible for it to pass on to other trees in the ground? I don't know anything about that sort of thing. I might actually Google it after a while just to see. Um, but as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like, thumbs up, really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next one. You should have the beacons on. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a necessity.